the sea has nearly swallowed up their entire country. Something like that could happen to Ireland in the coming future if we don't do anything about our emissions and rising sea levels. Hi all, I'm Evie Kenny and today on Ecolution we're turning up the heat on climate action and taking temperature changes, rising sea levels and the effects that we're already seeing at home and further afield. Joining me today is a panel of very knowledgeable young people who share their thoughts and experiences on this topic. David, Dana, Mara and Arjun, welcome back to the show. Let's jump right in with a big question. Arjun, do you think people understand the severity of global warming in terms of degrees, as in the difference in impact between 1.5 degrees and 2? Um, so if you like, of course, that's one point which every person is most familiar with. Um, the temperature is increasing and that has become more of a cliche quote than rather an actual concern among people. Um among all the protests, you see that the uh, planet is warming up. It is warming up, but there are a lot of different causes, which are a lot of different effects which are being caused, which people are not talking about. An example for this could be, which we are going to talk about, the rise in sea level, the uh, root cause of it, which is using more non-renewable energy and melting of glaciers, which affect the Arctic population. So I feel like, yeah, there is definitely a sense of awareness among all my uh, companions or all my friends that the temperature of uh, Earth is rising every year and every day as well. This could be easily shown by that the summers last year was way less or warmer than it is today. So, yeah. And what about you, Mara? Do you think people have enough awareness about what this actually means for us? Um, I don't think people realise um, between just the 1.5 and the 2 degrees and how significant that would be. Um, I think um, the difference between 1.5 and 2 degrees, um, I think that it's the difference between the Arctic having uh, like a decade of like no like ice in the Arctic and like only a small bit of the time that would happen. Or like between coral, coral reefs, like I think it's like completely wiped out or like I think it's like 30% hanging on. Like it's really like it's quite significant. You wouldn't think it. Um yeah, and just really like every degree counts. And I think the goal um, among, you know, international um, countries and stuff is like to try limit it to 1.5. That is it. We can't afford like and we actually still have to take quite a lot, a lot of drastic measures to limit it to 1.5. Yeah. And Dana, do you think people are really understanding the re- relevance of global warming? Um, No, I don't think uh, today people understand the relevance of global warming because it does seem like such a cliche topic uh, with regards to the environmental crisis. And I feel like when people bring up the topic of global warming, it's usually used to like, oh, frame the like the crazy environmentalist or like people are like, oh, we'll get some nicer weather. And they don't really understand the impact that it has uh, with regards to um, more intense uh, and more dangerous uh, natural weather phenomenon like typhoons and um, and hurricanes and stuff, um, but also in rising sea rising sea levels and rising sea temperatures and the loss of biodiversity. So I really don't think people understand just the weight of how of the rising temperatures. Yeah, like how severe it can be. We're mm-hmm. seeing it all over. David, are people grasping what it means for the Earth to be heating up? I don't think so. Simply put, because. Um, Historically, it has happened before where we our planet has cooled or it's warmed up a bit and that has historically kind of like thrown the planet into chaos. Like our planet is like, uh, yes, it is suitable for life, but it's also quite fickle in terms of temperatures. For example, one or two, even one degrees in change of temperature, either cooling or heating up can like completely skew up how like the climate is for like in places where it might rain a lot it could become dry it could become colder it could become like much almost like snowing instead of raining and places where it could typically snow it could start just freezing instead and no rain because it could become similar to the arctic in terms or sorry the antarctic in terms of it like basically being a desert like that we need to limit it because we do, some places where you might never see rain at all, su- such as desert, could become swamps again. And places which could very typically be wet could become like near deserts, like here, for example. So we have a, a listener's question that relates to this too. 
Hi, my name is Josh. I'm in 3C Steps Let Educate Together, and I've got a great teacher. I, my, um, my question is about Greenland. My question is, how long will it take for the ice on Greenland to disappear? Well, from the research I've looked at, it seems it could take anything from 1,000 to 10,000 years for it to completely melt. But there is a danger that it could soon reach a tipping point that could really accelerate that process. So David, do you think we're talking enough about the Arctic and Antarctic in our home lives and school? No. Something I think a lot of people don't realise is that um, fridge, like your fridge, um, up until recently, the Freon gas had a hole in the ozone layer in the Antarctic. Well, not recently, but like recently enough. And that contributed a lot of damage because a lot of UV rays landed on the Antarctic. And that was very detrimental to both like animals and also to the ice itself because it like exposed the ice to like, I assume, like melting far rapidly. Yeah. And how about you, Dana? Have you had many discussions with friends and family about the effects of climate change that we can see at the Earth's poles? Um, Honestly, I don't think I've had many discussions with uh, my friends and family about this topic because it can be quite a depressing topic. Um, Lots of people really do like to sort of steer away from the the more sadder topics like our melting poles because when people think about it all they see is like a polar bear and he's dying on the ice but it's important that we do try to bring it up in conversation with other people um, because it's just so important to spread awareness and just so that everyone actually does grasp the understanding of how the severity of it. And Mara do you ever discuss this in school? Um, no, literally, as Dana said, like, it is quite sad and with the polar bears, especially because they're like the main image you would see. And like, yeah, but it's something that it has to be talked about to for something to be done about it. Um, yeah, I think the as well, like the melting of the ice, um, it, it, it absorb it reflects most a lot of the heat back to the sun. But uh if that goes, it's just going to be the dark water, which does not do the same. And that would um, result in our planet becoming even warmer, which we definitely can't have having um, happening. And um, yeah, and then also the rising sea levels is very relevant to Ireland. And I just, people just do not think about it. It's like, we see the co- severe coastal erosion that's happening and they're more like, oh, we need to try to fix that by fix like putting in rehabilitation measures, but we probably should look at the root cause, which is the Arctic. Yeah, and over to you, Arjun. Is this a topic that troubles you? Um, Yeah, of course. So I feel like in my school and in my wider community, this is a topic which is not widely talked about. Whenever we talk about climate advocacy or climate change, we mainly talk about global warming and uh, the increase in temperature, but we do not talk about the causes of such which is, for example, uh, melting of Arctic. Um, What I did uh, a few years ago was that I created a short game which talked about the polar bear and the mom, uh, the polar bear mom uh, just getting separated due to an iceberg breaking. And that got a lot of views. So just a small insight which I could uh, like to share is that it's really easy for the students to get to know more if we give them in a game, game or in a fun way. For an example, that game got really great views and I'm highly grateful for it. And if we talk about just giving a workshop about the same, there would not be as many people as interested as playing a game. So I feel like uh, uh, there needs to be a more uh, awareness about the same. And the best way to do so, in my opinion, is to approach the young people in the way they want to be approached, which would allow them to empower others as well in the same topic. Yeah, so having more accessible ways to get people involved and understanding the topic. Completely fair. So let's talk about our actions right here in Ireland. Dana, do you see any connections between what we do here at home and the changes that we're seeing in our weather systems? Oh, yes, I absolutely do. Um, Like... In, in a lot of our society, is we're really dependent on fossil fuels. And, you know, people uh, use fossil fuels in their everyday life, uh, in their cars, and even to heat their home. And I feel like, obviously, that does have a huge effect on uh, the rising sea levels um, due to the melting of the ice in the Arctic. 
Yeah, and Arjun, are you aware of impact of our actions on our weather? Um, I am, but I feel like there's definitely way more improvement every day. Um, since we live in an area where we fortunately do not really feel all the effects of the climate change as the other people near the Arctic or in parts of Africa or Asia feel, I feel like we are incredibly grateful for that, but still we need to have a certain amount of empathy for them as well and try to work with them, try to uh, unify our relation with them such that we are emphasizing that we are in this together and there would be a time when every single one of us would feel the climate uh, effects of the climate change as each other. So yeah, I feel like there needs to be more unification required between such people who are facing the effects and people who are facing lesser relative effects. Yeah, and Mara, anything notable about what we're doing and the changes that we're seeing? Um, yeah, obviously it's the it's our carbon emissions are still way too high and I think we're kind of nearly missing the target um for the upcoming um assemblies that will be happening between international leaders and we are going to have to pay a lot of money again because of that, which I think we do need to have those stakes there for change to happen. Um, but again, if you think about it, we will be losing that money again. That's no one likes to see that. Um, and yeah, just like people like you, like it's important to make these changes to your life because um, nobody wants to see more rain. And that's one of the things that has, because of global warming, has happened, which is like, I think there's a significant increase between a period from the 1980s to 2010 and from the period like that we are having, experiencing now. We have a lot more rain and that's because of this. And everything is, everything is connected and we need to do more, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And David, do you think that our actions here in Ireland are changing our weather systems? Uh, Definitely. I've talked to my parents a good bit before about it and they would say that they've noticed changes in the weather even in their lifetimes which isn't like even that long but it's scary that in like that length of time that it, stuff has changed so much and as Dana said we are a country that is heavily reliant on fossil fuels which is not a good thing and often I think is something that's rather quite ironic is is that like the fact that we're kind of blind I think as a country in some ways to the actual effects because yeah we're getting like good weather but like we're not supposed to be and also as well that it's happening to other people who'd be contributing the least to these emissions that it's happening to the most and I don't think it will be until too late when we actually properly realise like what our actions have caused when something massive happens like large sea level rises that could end up swallowing up a good chunk of our country. Yeah so no man is an island but Ireland is. We're surrounded by stunning coastlines, but what does that mean for us in terms of climate change? We will end on a question from one of our listeners. Hello, I'm Vicendo. I'm nine years old. I study on step site educate together. I have the rest teacher on the universe. And my question is, what impact will rising sea levels have on Ireland because we are on an island? I'll start with Mara. Do we think about the impacts enough? I think if you don't live in a coastal area or if you don't have like a river nearby, you might just hear it on the news and kind of just ignore it. But there is communities, um, especially in the West, um, southwest of Ireland, that are experiencing really horrific flooding and the government are scrambling, well, maybe not scrambling hard enough to try to find measures to help these people. But again, looking at the root cause um, with that, and um, even in my local area, um, we have a walk beside the river and often you go down and you're trying to walk the dog and it's flooded terribly. And that is because of rising sea levels. Um, so, yeah, no, you have to really just look around. Yeah. Yeah. And Arjun, do you think Ireland will see any major impacts due to our island status? Um, definitely. In the coming years, the global warming is um, allowing an increase in the um, the ocean levels and I believe that would someday definitely would start to affect us. It still has started to affect us in areas of uh, in times of heavy rainfall and from time to time but I feel like in future the frequency of the same would increase and we definitely need to start working on how to prevent the same beforehand. Yeah and David do you think we need to think about what impact climate change might have on us as an island country? 
Uh, absolutely. After all, it was climate change that made our country an island, um, for example. And also as well that there's so much of our livelihood and a lot of our towns and cities are coastal. Like, that's scary once you realise that, that a good chunk of our population is on the coast, such as, for example, Dublin City, our largest city, that's on the coast. And if their water was to rise, even where I live, um, Westport, like the water's actually like there's areas in the town where I'd say that if the water did rise, that you would definitely notice a change. Um, even on the Greenway as well, there's often like one area in particular that's often actually quite heavily flooded now. It's only been recently as well, which is scary to realise because that's soon like that's likely to be soon to become one of many, many other places if we keep going the path that we are going down. And Dana, what ways can you see climate change impacting our island? Um, well, we can already see the effects of climate change, um, definitely in certain areas, like especially around coastal areas and areas near rivers. Um, I tried. I went to down to visit my aunt and uncle in Cork, and as we were driving there, I saw there was an entire car park that was just entirely flooded, and you know it just really like brings it into light how how much climate change is actually affecting Ireland as an island. And I know there was another um, another island nation, um, I forget where it was, but their their country has nearly been entirely um like this temp- the sea has nearly swallowed up their entire country and i know the leader of that nation actually posted a video about it um of him standing in the sea and so uh, something like that could happen to ireland in the coming future if we don't do anything about our emissions and rising sea levels yeah, Alex, so, so, so much to take away from today's chat. Thanks so much to Dana, Mara, Arjun and David for all of your input today. I'm Evie Kenny and you can hear more from Ecolution wherever you listen to your podcasts. Don't forget, we have plenty more panel discussions on all kinds of topics from fast fashion to biodiversity that you can watch right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ecolution.